The 5-2 Montana State Bobcats, fresh off a of bye week, return to action this week against the 4-3 North Dakota Fighting Hawks in what is the final Big Sky Conference matchup between the two teams. And you look at this, Zach, uh, this matchup, Montana State comes in here fresh off this bye. What do you think they did to prepare for the North Dakota Fighting Hawks with this extra week of preparation? Well, I think they spent a lot of time thinking about themselves. How could they fix things? What were they going to have to do to get in and out of things? I thought there were a couple of tendencies they thought maybe they were giving teams that they were trying to fix. So a lot of that bye week, and a lot of times that's the way it is, just kind of focusing on yourself. What can we do to get better? Well, North Dakota is a team that has beaten two ranked opponents inside the Alaris Center. They're undefeated at home. They beat Sam Houston State and UC Davis when they were a top 15 team. What makes them so good at home? You know, it's funny because they don't have the elements like we have here right now with the dome and everything, but they do, you know, it's just that freshness, kind of that likeness of being at home and not having to worry so much about, you know, who's going to travel where, how that's going to work. And, you know, some teams just have it. Some teams are really good at home, and this is just one of them. It's hard to explain what, uh, what exactly is a difference maker. Well, they did get their first road win, so they do carry a little bit of momentum into this game, but they're a team that changes identities a little bit. It used to be ground and pound. John Santiago, Brady Oliveira with the physical run game. They're a little bit more spread you out, big physical wide receivers. What have you seen in this uh, offensive sh switch for North Dakota? Well, you know, it looks like the Bobcats are going to have to play a lot of their base defense more so than they've been shifting into different things. They've seen some, you know, the last couple of weeks, some specialty, whether it be the triple option, whether it be some different options. This is going to spread you out a little bit more. A lot of Lots going to be asked of those DBs. Uh, they're going to get a lot of work throughout uh, this week uh, through practice that we've seen and also in that game. Uh, but again, it, it just comes down to that front defensive line. If they can be effective and good like they've been uh, throughout, you, you got to believe that the Bobcats always got a shot. Well, and this is a team that gives up over 200 yards rushing per game in North Dakota Fighting Hawks. What does Montana State have to do to get back to being physical and running the football against this team? Yeah, you know, I think just get back to that really good ground game that we saw in the first couple of weeks. At times, the Bobcats, so many options, so many weapons, you know. But uh, again, they've got a lot out of the backfield. I think they're more healthy now, too. That bye week has brought some of those running backs. That's been one of the positions that really uh, has, there hasn't been a ton of injuries throughout the year, but it seems like a lot in one position group. And right there, so. Uh, you know, you get some of those guys back and uh, you just kind of get that flow back and, and get things moving along. Well, you mentioned it, Montana State won't have to deal with the elements. It's an early kickoff in Grand Forks as the Bobcats take the uh, field at 11 a.m. kickoff, 10 o'clock pregame show right on the Bobcat Radio Network. So join myself, Dan Davies, and Zach Mackey for all the action.